Now this year's Create by the Bay has the theme of Our World, Our Future. So as I said, I created an astronaut for one of my figures and I would like to think that humanity would at one day go out amongst the stars and maybe discover new life forms. So I've created what I think might happen on another planet. So on that figure, I'm going to show you how to do some of the intricate molding things. I'm going to show you that in time lapse right now. So here's a close-up of some of the detail on my alien monster and I'll show you just how I created some of the texture particularly around the back of the head. Earlier I showed you this tool that I made from some toothpicks and some masking tape and this is what I've used to create some of the hair texture and it's simply a matter of just scratching into the clay until you're happy with the way that that looks. And to me that looks a lot like messy fur. Of course, this creature isn't completely furred. It's a little bit like a lizard. So I've created some lizardy skin down here and I've done that using different sized uh, holes. So I've just taken the ink out of a, a, a pen here. And for the smaller holes, I've just used the bit that you would normally write with. And that creates some quite nice little dents in there. And the other end, which is a bigger hole, I've used to create some of these larger circles. But really you can use anything so anything that has a texture on it will create a mark on your clay I mean, this is just a rubble thimble thimble used for counting that will create a quite nice texture on my creature now look at that so that's quite easily done on the other side I'll show you some other tools that I just made. This was a toothpick bundle that I've just made with some cable ties um, and some masking tape. And you can use that to create pockmark surfaces. So lots of little holes. Or you could drag it to create a more rough surface if you really want to. So really, it's up to you what kind of textures you want to make. Um, I've just used some of my other tools to create some scales down here on the tail. But really, it's up to you what kind of shapes that you want to make and what textures that you need to create. Just try and have fun with what you're doing. Now, the thing about air dry clay is that it will dry out fairly quickly if you don't um, have time to finish it all in one go. And that's quite possible, particularly on the really intricate one so what I would suggest that you do is get just a rag and soak that rag in a little bit of water squeeze out most of the water and then you can wrap it around your clay carefully so that you don't get rid of any of the details that you put in it and then grab a piece of plastic or a plastic bag and wrap up the clay now you want to do this particularly if you're not going to be able to come back and work on it for a little while uh, the more that you can keep your clay damp the longer you're going to have to work on the surfaces because once it dries out it's quite difficult to make it wet again you can use things like a spray bottle to keep your clay a little bit wet but the wetter you make it the more messy it is so you need to be careful of that as your clay dries out though because we've used aluminium in the armature you've got to make sure that you're drying out your clay relatively slowly so when it's time to cure the work before we paint it we would not put the wet rag in there we would still cover it up and then leave it for a few days and then gradually 
leave the plastic off until the point where you're going to leave it completely uncovered. You're looking for the clay to go more like leather before it goes completely hard like, like rock. You will see some little cracks in there, but what you can do if you see cracks is just get some wet air dry clay and smear them into the cracks again. So you can, you can putty those holes up if that's what happens to your work. So don't be too concerned if it cracks a little. If you have a little piece that breaks off, um, you can even just use some glue and glue it back on before you paint it. It's not the end of the world if something just drops off, just make sure that you have some way of gluing it back together. So once your sculpture is cured, it's time to finish it. I've chosen to paint mine and I've just used normal poster paints that you would get at school, um, but you can use any kind of decoration that you want. You don't even have to use paint. You can use fabric. You can use anything that you want to decorate your work to finalize it. So I'm just gonna show you a quick video on how I painted my space person. So there you have it. I really hope you've enjoyed going through this mini masterclass on how to create a sculpture. I really, really am looking forward to seeing some sculptural entries in this year's Create by the Bay. What I want you to remember though, is there's a few things. There are no mistakes, there are only happy accidents. Don't get caught up on the perfection because there is no such thing as perfection. Just try your hardest and have fun. It's what sculpture and creating art is all about. I look forward to seeing what you've created. Have a great day and I'll see you in one of the libraries. At the end of this video I'm also going to leave you the recipe on how to make your own air dry clay.